Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy, ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? No, no, Nino Madeo, well, go on. I want y'all to stop what you're doing right now. Go like, subscribe, follow us from all social media platforms. What I mean, all. I mean, all. I mean, our Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, you name it, we're on it. Just Google us, Boss Talk Podcast 101, and we will pop up, guarantee you. But if you want to see our visuals, you got to go over to our YouTube channel. There, you just go ahead and click subscribe. Click the notification so you don't miss not one episode because you're not going to want to, okay? But if you want to get the exclusive content now, that's where you're going to have to look under each and every video, including this one right here in the description section. There is a link that says join our membership. Go ahead and click that link, follow the instructions, and do what it do, baby, because you are not going to be disappointed because y'all see us on the street all the time be like, man, I love your content. Y'all keep pushing. How can we support the brand? This is how you can support the brand. Buy the membership. Thank you in advance. Man, guess what, man? We down here in Meridian, Mississippi. Meridian. It's going down, man. Your boy ECO done pulled up with the official Miss Jamaica and we down here, man. Uh, shout out to everything that's going down. Uh, in in the Meridian town, man, mm -hmm. we we went out down here last night. We had to come down here and, and get it in in Mississippi. This is our is this our first show in Mississippi? Yes, the first Boss Talk One Hundred One official show in Mississippi. We've been to Chicago, we've been to Houston several times. We've been in Atlanta, we've been in L.A., Vegas, everywhere you could think of. And lo and behold, Shreveport. We've been everywhere, New Orleans. Mm -hmm. Today, guys, we in the dirty man down here in Mississippi, man. Meridian is going down, man. Miss Jessica is in the building. What's going on? Uh, what's up? It's Miss Jessica, aka Goddess of the Game. We in here, Boss Talk 101. Where the bosses about? talk. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> <laughs> Man, pull that bike up to you a little bit more. Listen, man, it's going down, man. Like, uh, I was happy that uh, we was going to get to sit down with you, man. Uh, been watching your movement, man. You going down through there, man. Dope music, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, we're going to get into your backstory just a little bit. Miss Jamaica, the official Miss Jamaica, about to go down through there and talk to you a little bit about it. Okay. So you're born and raised in Mississippi. Born and raised. So with your mom and your dad in the same household? No. Mm -mm. Only your mom. Uh, yeah, my mom for a short amount of time, but I grew up mainly with my aunt and uncle. Really? Aunt and uncle? Okay, so where was your dad and where was your mom and how old were you when you had to go with your aunt and uncle? Well, my mom, when I was five, she got incarcerated. My okay. dad was in the military, so we never like really lived with him. So when that happened, we uh, moved, me and my three older siblings, we moved to uh, West Point. We was in Columbus for a short amount of time which is North Mississippi. Mm -hmm. And then we moved to West Point when that happened. And uh, yeah. So what did your mom go to prison for? You know, it's something that we don't really talk about. I think it has something to do with some finances, some money. But, you know, she never really like just told me straight up what it was. But we she just was heard. Jugging. Yeah, pretty much. Jug. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> How long did she get? Uh, about 10 years. 10 years. Yeah, about eight. Federal? Eight. Um, State. Yeah. It was state. It wasn't. It. Mm, I don't know. So <coughs> and it had to do with finances. You see, yeah, she wasn't do selling dope. No, I don't think that. No, I don't know. You know, but she might be selling some dope because mm -hmm. for federal. Yeah, no, state. It's <laughs> state. state. Mm. It was state, so so federal that money gonna use. you know nobody talk about it. Maybe one day she'll tell me. She, she never, out right? Yeah, she out. She been out for since like two thousand and three. Yeah. yeah, and she was, you just never 20 asked years she's been out. Yeah. You think you can get on Boss Talk? Man, we might could get on Boss Talk. She yeah, she gonna get boss. that story up. She <laughs> wanted to get it. And, and, she, and she, if she was about money then, she like your boy E, she about money now. Yeah, yeah, she is. She definitely is. That, 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 would, that would be it. <laughs> so, but hold on. So, okay. So, until five, your dad was in the military. Yeah. Um, was your dad married? No, he wasn't married. He was just a player. Yeah, because I'm like, why not take your family with you? You can take well, your you family know, with you. I appreciate you. him not doing it because if he would have did it and still messed it up, you know, it could have been worse. Mm. You know, 
I don't like have no resentment against now one of my parents. So in the whole time, in the whole five years, how often did you get to see him in the first five years of your life? Well, we seen him like West Point and Columbus ain't too far. They like mm-hmm. 15 minute drive, you know, we okay. go over there on the weekend throughout the week and stuff. Oh, so you did but, get yeah. to see him pretty often. But he often. lived in West Point. So like when my mom got incarcerated in Columbus, we like stayed in West Point. Mm-hmm. And then it was like second grade, third grade up until like uh, I was in the 11th grade. Mm-hmm. And then I moved to Jackson. So, and came to stay with my mom. She was out of prison and could get custody, you know, okay. by, by that time. Okay. But he just, you know, it was just busy. He's just mm-hmm. a busy man. And, you know, would rather us go over here and stay, I guess, would rather my aunt and uncle raise us because that's, that's what happened. And now your aunt and uncle is your mama's brother and sister or your daddy's mama's? My mama's. Uh, mama's sister. side of the yeah. family. Okay. So, moving forward, how did you find the love for music? Um, growing up in the household, like here, my mom was singing, like before she, oh, got, she can sing. Yeah. My whole family, they singers, you know, my mm-hmm. aunt and, um, when they used to come down, uh, from the up North in Chicago and in, uh, Beloit, we used to sing songs and my aunt, she was heavy. What's on What's a favorite song? Um, lift Jesus higher, higher, can you sing? higher. I can sing a little bit. A little bit. Okay. I'm not going to ask you. You said a little bit. So I ain't going to. Lift Jesus higher, higher, lower, 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 oh, lower. Right yeah. Okay. You know, it's yeah. all like that. Yeah. Okay. I remember that one. And uh, just like going to church with my grandma, you know, Kojic, singing in the choir. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mississippi life, country life. So not having your dad in your life and having your mom gone, Although you were living with your aunt and uncle, looking back on your life now, how did that affect your life, maybe subconsciously? Did you act out? Did you make wrong choices? All of that sort of good stuff. Not good stuff, but bad stuff. Yeah, it was weird because, like, to say, like, he wasn't in my life like that, but he was literally, like, around the corner. Right. We were, like, a a ditch literally separated right. where I live from him, but it still was a lot of distance. Mm-hmm. Like, even though, like, somebody could be that close, like, you know, but... But yet know, so far. Yeah, yeah, but... um, How did that affect you? It affected me a lot, especially, I believe, like, with choices I made with dealing with guys as I, as I got older and, like, just going to school and graduating and learning about, like, different mental, like, statements and ways that I could be thinking of love and stuff like that, especially when I um, think about being a dancer so mm-hmm. much, like an ex-dancer. Well, I, how old were you when you ventured off into being a dancer? I had graduated high school by that time. Okay, yeah, so I about 18, 19? Right at 18, you know. How were you enticed up. into it? I met a pimp. Shoot, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I met a pimp at uh, Waffle House mm. in Jackson. <laughs> wow. He yeah. tried to recruit you. He recruited me. He recruited <laughs> you. God, like, he actually did. So. What did he say to you when he came? Well, he just gave me his card and was like, I want you to model for me. So, you know. Oh, that's was, how he put it, model. In the city, so I was like, cool. You know, I was. Like, you knew I he was a pimp when he came up? I didn't know he was a pimp, but he I had knew a different he was aura? popular, like, and, and had, like, some motion and whatever going on. But I didn't know like well, did he have really a know what a pimp was. Did he have you know? a mink on? No, he didn't have no mink. He just like was like had like a D boy outfit on. Was he handsome? No, nah, he's way older. He was like <laughs> one of the old Mississippi pimps, yeah. Because when somebody said model for you, I'm not thinking about him being a pimp or nothing like that. It makes it sound like, oh, you ha- you, you, you're going to turn me into a model? You're going to put me on a New York strip or he something had the like fashion. that? Like he was known for having the fashion and like, you know, so. So when did you find out that he was a pimp? And how did you find out? Sure. He eventually told me and then was like, um, sat me down and had me watch all kind of videos relating to (laughs) pimping, like old players ball with Bishop Magic Dunn. That's my boy. Shout out, Bishop. Yeah, he had me and watched me. You see Pimpin' Ken on there? I saw all of them on there. Pimpin' Ken, Pimpin' C. That's my boy. It was like a hip-hop take. This was back in like 2018. I remember when it happened. It was a minute ago. Okay. So when you saw all of that, you were enticed by the lifestyle? Or were you scared? I was immediately enticed by the lifestyle. So you oh, liked okay. it. You yeah. were like, this this whole. Yeah. You're like, I can do this. Mm-hmm. So he now, you are now a dancer, but did he turn you into a prostitute as well? Um, I think I really ended up turning myself into a prostitute at the time that I was into it. Um, but he introduced the lifestyle and like 
kind of put it on my brain, but he, he never made it mandatory for me to go out there and, you know, mm -hmm. get money that extra way like that. It was just, okay, this club over here, this club over here. Okay. Yeah. But more so one of the older girls that he had, he had put me with cause he had another, his bottom yeah, bitch. he had another, whole, you know what I'm saying? And then another one. And it's crazy because, um, we had went to new Orleans on our first trip, mm -hmm. you know, and she ended up leaving me there. So that's how I really just got into the lifestyle. I was like, well. I got to survive. Mm -hmm. How long were you there for? I ended up just staying. Um, in New Orleans? Yeah, I ended up just staying. I had met another girl. She was like, well, you can come over here to my house. You know what I'm saying? And then I met her brother, started talking to her brother. And, you know, I just was like, well, shoot, forget school, forget college. I'm for the, you know, I'm for to get this money and I'm for to live my life. I was meaning a lot of NFL So you didn't, have, you, didn't have no, you didn't have no pimp at that time? Nah, no, I didn't. You renegade? Yeah, yeah. Wow. How much money you made in, the most money you made in one night? Um, One probably, day. One day, yeah. One day, probably like three, four thousand dollars $4,000. I wasn't, you It know, wasn't as big time in it. Mm-mm. No, I wasn't. But would you, would you, when you, did you have your fly ride whip? Did you? I did. It. I had a couple. I had a Monte Carlo. I had a BMW. Yeah, you uh, come through. Firebird. You come yeah. through. <laughs> did you get another pimp after that? I have went through a phase. You know, I think it's like a. That's like what I don't like about it. It's like once you start it, it's like, damn, how I turn it off. Where the switch? You know what I'm saying? Because then. You just don't know how not to get no nigga no pussy unless he giving you some money. money. And then, because then after that, you got like this pimp mind over here like, with you out here fucking for free. And mm -hmm. then I'm like, well, dang. Shout out to my girl, <laughs> Hustle Mom Martina, to be on here. It's going down. So it's like, it's you know, you go through like, I want to find like that one legit guy that understand, but it never happens. So you just end up, you know. So you couldn't never turn it off. Uh, I turned it off recently, you know. How? Through, like just realizing it goes nowhere. Mm. It goes nowhere. It's but, just, you know, you don't want to be 40 and 50 still in the, in the club and ain't got, you know, nothing to pay for or show for it. And mm -hmm. you mad at the younger girls coming up. Taking you know, your spot. Yeah. Wow. So you basically, you you know, you go through all these phases, uh, stripping, you know what I'm saying, getting to the money. Um, who was the, what was the hardest line that a, a real pimp tried to put down <laughs> to you, you know, to get you to, you know, turn a trick? Um... I don't remember no line, but I I had got put down over a game of bowling before. Wow, <laughs> what a game of bowling! Yeah, it was it's like plain. a bit. It was a bit, and um, the the pimp at the time he was like trying to get me down. I was just out there solo, just doing my own thing in the mm -hmm. casinos, mm -hmm. and he would see me around. And um, he had saw that I was messing with this other. Like, guy who called himself Money Mike out of uh, California. I'm calling him out. I don't know. He might not even be around no more. I don't know what he got going on his life. But uh, he saw I wasn't messing around with him no more. So he was like, let's go to bowling. Let's make a bet. And then I was like, okay, yeah, if you win, I will give you, like, one night. Like, we could do some shit for, like, you gonna let him. You're going you gonna to let him, you gonna let him uh, you know. We're going to see how we're going to make some money. Make some know? money, it, right. It was 72 hours in that time. But, you know, so I lost the game of bowling. And then. I kind of like just really learned like early you can't really just be playing out here like this. So mm -hmm. I lost the game of bowling. I still didn't fuck with the nigga. And he had got <laughs> mad. Oh, the nigga yeah, looking for you. Yeah, he was looking. He was looking. You ditched yeah. you ditched, yeah, I ditched him. him. Yeah, yeah. You didn't never like, work for him or give nope, him nothing? Nope, didn't never give him nothing. And he ain't never found you. Uh uh. Who was mm -hmm. the one that you? He had came back in the club that I was working at and was kind of like I was on stage. Thank God I was on stage because he was pissed off. He was real pissed off. He took it real serious. This is when I was like, okay, yeah, it's some, it's some real. Yeah, because I, I heard them peas be beating like up on them hoes too. So you got to be careful okay, how you so, move. Okay, so so let me ask you this: like you, I was young. And no, 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 like you out there, you out here, uh, uh, really tricking pimps. You cold, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> a cold broad, you know what I'm saying? So let me ask: did you basically have a guy that you was dedicated to that you love to give him money? No. So your ass was renegade anyway. Yeah. You didn't want to give them niggas money. Uh uh. You wanted to hit the track on your own. Yeah, and they just a lot of guys like don't respect that. Mm -hmm. and, and, the, and and the strip club was saving you. Yeah, it was. And, and little like it's crazy because I got left down there, but that's still like to this day. If I need to go get me some money, I got to hustle where I know 
way more with my mindset than I was like mm-hmm. back then. I know how to like just get straight to it and don't be out here trying to mingle and doing all this friendly shit because that'll get you messed up and then you'll get like locked up in somebody else's stuff and you don't know what's going on. So um, that's a hustle that I got forever, but it's, it's hard to leave alone because if you always pulling back on it, you know, if you always like, well, I can always go do that, then it'll always be there. Wow. What's the worst situation you've had to, you got yourself into with maybe a trick that even maybe you were like, were scared or just anything at all? Tell me about that situation. You know what? Thankfully, I have been blessed or had some favor because I haven't been involved in anything um, no altercation with a with a trick, but or weird. Anything. But no, the weirdest thing that ever happened was like in the club, where like a a white guy I'm gonna call him like he was a white guy came mm-hmm. in with a trench coat and was just on some weird freaky shit, you know. Who was he naked up on a trench yeah, coat? Yeah, had on lingerie and stuff, you know that type of stuff like that. But um, the most stuff I done been through with was with other pimps and hoes like them. Being jealous and envious and you know okay. stuff like that, but wow! Ugh, thank God I had um, experience. Mm-hmm. Like Let's that. get into it, man. Uh, into the music. Yeah, about that. You you did that about six months ago. Yeah, I did that. About what was what was the driving factor for that song and that then the visuals on it? Okay, about that the beat. I'm often like inspired by the beat, and then it was at a time where I just felt like. I'm always trying to like advance and show my lyrical abilities and bars. But then also kind of like I wanted to infuse fashion with the video. And then the guy that shot it, we shot it in the historic Ferris district and highlighted Jackson and highlight the, you know, a Mississippi city and just was kind of um, showcasing, you know, Mississippi, putting Mississippi on the map and showing that. Everybody around here that I know is about that. Like, how, how, how they first <clears throat> verse go? Bitches be capping in they raps. They not about that. I raised the bar. You got to reach me with the top at. <laughs> Man, y'all don't want her to go down through there. I just got to <laughs> give y'all niggas a, a skip it, nigga. You know what she do. Uh, so, and, and how long did it take you to write that? Do you write or do you punch in? I write and then I punch in sometimes because of the breath. Okay. No breathing. <laughs> yeah, and and who was the first one to take you into the studio? The first time I went in the studio was with my brothers. Yep, it was uh, at the Metro Center Mall. They had a studio in the mall, and uh, we went up in there and recorded like to like a YouTube track. It probably was like um, I know I did like Notorious B.I.G. Spit your game, talk your shit. They had did something else, but yeah, that's the first time we recorded. We used to always freestyle and shit to like regular CD tracks and the radio and, um, you know, with technology and YouTube and stuff, we got, we was able to download on LimeWire and do stuff like that. And then we went inside the studio and recorded. So I went in there with my brothers and my sister. Wow. Um, busting out, you you in front of an old house. Where, is, where are y'all at on that video? That was an old trap spot that I stayed in, for real. Oh, so that was a real house? Yeah, that you, yeah, really? I, like, like, I got up out of there. There was a room and house I used to stay in. I was so po. And I said that when I get on my feet, I was going to go back there and shoot Did anybody video. live there anymore? Yeah, somebody still live there. you like, I want to do it. I used to live here. You knocked on the door. I no, used to live no, here. my people, they own it now. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, they done renovated it. And, and ever since that video, it looked totally different. It looked like a whole new spot. Oh, you they switched it up on you. So you got in there just in time. You know, I got in there to do the video right. Right, yeah, yeah just yeah. in time. So yeah. what, what was it about that song? How that song start? Give me something on that. I can't even think about it. Right now, I knew, yeah, 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 yeah. You just like the rest of these old rap. Y'all ain't know your damn song. Get out of here. You supposed to know that thing when you was in front of that damn house like that. <laughs> but it was, it, I listened to it. I was just jamming it. The, the cadence yeah. to the music, like I just mm-hmm. told you, the cadence and the music is dope, man. I love the way the music, I don't like the two minutes, so I'm an old nigga. Four, five, <laughs> four, five minute Lenny William type nigga. You know what I'm saying? But I get it. You know, the time we in, everybody, that TikTok face got us working, working, working. You know what I'm saying? What's what's the new, uh, you got a new EP? Yeah, I got a new mixtape. It's called Bad Girl Era. It's out right now. Bad stands for Black American Dream okay. Girl okay. Era. And I just feel like we in a time where, you know, everybody want to police and tell a female what to do, how to 
wear, what to wear, you know, how to rap. But I think, like, music is art, and every person should have to write and go in the booth just like a painter, go and paint and, and paint whatever they want. And, you know, as long as it's positive, I feel like we're in an era people really not seeing the positivity and all the black girl magic that's going on in the different ways that it's going on. Wow, how so, many how many songs on the music site? Um, 11, but it's really eight songs. It's some interludes and some talking on there. Wow, what is your process to setting up a project in these days and time? Like, uh, what is your main goal when you when you did bag? What, what was the main goal behind the whole project? I wanted to leave like a piece of art. Like, that's what I wanted to do. Um, I always like just drop a freestyle if I just want to rap and put some out there and feeling like a creative urge to do something. But with Bad Girl Era, I wanted to like take somebody on a journey to kind of like see um, the different ways that a female can express themselves but still make it like genuine and community driven. But also, I wanted this to really be like the last time I kind of rap in a way that's kind of just really out there on a song I got called Liddy. So it really was like the the last like vibe of that I'm going to give of that music. Well, I'm, I talked to a couple of people down in Mississippi and they had told me you did like Bad Girl Era, era cause you basically was trying to like, like you know, you want to branch off with what Diddy had going, you going to do yours mm -hmm. kind of like bad with Diddy. Bad boys, bad girls. Bad boys, bad girls. And so they say you was connected with P. Diddy. No Diddy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just no disrespect, but no kidding, baby. <laughs> Let me quit belly, no, man. No, uh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no man hey listen man like I said um, I just I, I love your story love everything that you do man like the one thing I can say man I appreciate you for coming on the platform hopefully we get to see you again man you know what I mean when I come back to Mississippi man shout out to Meridian for having us man shout out to you for even coming down and you know sitting down with us mm, we just like to show it. love to every city we love Mississippi shout out to appreciate my boy I, my boy Smoke D like he that's one of my people like I deal with everybody so you know he wanted to come up uh been on the show a few times uh a ray like i told you a ray on the track he did that track for glorilla like i had him on the show too so it's a bunch of y'all i just hadn't came to mississippi but guess what mm -hmm. your boy done stomped down landed okay. sitting in that. the seat and uh I'm, I'm down here man and and i'm gonna give me something to eat that even rhymed a little bit you know what i'm talking about you know what i'm saying but definitely thank you for coming on the show like how can people get a hold of you if they're trying to yeah. reach out yeah so uh just let me plug this real quick i want to shout out Let's to go. everybody on my TikTok that Come I on now. grow. I do tarot readings on TikTok. Okay. So shout out to the Just Tribe. Okay. And, uh, be Where sure that to, come from? Yeah, that's that's what I'm into spirituality and I design websites. So anybody need website you design? Website too? Mm -hmm, Magnuckle.com, spiritualbaddies.com, Miss Jessica, that's M S J E S S E C A. You need your tarot, call me now. I well, you be trying to tell Cleo looking. Yeah. Like. Your ass is a hustler. This yeah, yeah, a hustler. It's all to go towards the music. You know what I'm saying? To what you to gonna like do when bag. TikTok is gone? Cause you know TikTok. We're gonna go. get that out of here. Going to that website. We we getting everybody to go over to the website under the own domain and still subscribe. But you know, hopefully, Meta will buy TikTok or Elon Musk. Hopefully, mm. one of these companies will buy. Oh, it. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. the only way it's gonna stay if it stays in America. Man, he probably so, want to sell it. Let's talk about uh, Jim. Uh, let's talk about uh, my boy. Uh, you, you, you under what? What's the name of the label? That Jim said. Yeah, Jim said. Yeah, I represent Freeway Records right now. Okay. Yeah, shout out to Jim. Shout out to uh, Freeway. Shout out to Getty and Tangela and everybody. We working. You know what I'm saying? That's hard, yeah. man. I like that, man. I had to get that in there, man, before we shut this thing down, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And shout out to you, man. Like yeah. I said, I, you really a delight. I, 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 ain't nobody sat in that seat that disappointed me yet down here in Mississippi, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The food good up there at the mm. casino. I ain't ate nothing since I've been down there from no Southerners. I'm getting upset about that. But other than that, man, it's going down. Mm -hmm. Boss Talk 101 is in Meridian, Mississippi. Yeah, shout out to Boss Talk. Shout out to Miss Jamaica. ECO. <laughs> shout out to ECO. Stop playing. Boss Talk 101. That's what they, well, shout out to Boss Talk. That's what they call me. They call you Boss Talk. They be on it, man. But guess what? Whatever you want to call me, just make sure you mention my name. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Boss Talk 101, man. Thank you so much, Miss Jessica. Uh, we love you. Mm -hmm. It's been another great segment. A boss, boss talk, talk 101. 101. Where the bosses talk. Man.